Okay, greetings from Fort Lauderdale. I thought what I would do this morning is talk a little bit about an exercise I used to do in my critical interpretation class. And it was an exercise where I would ask the students two questions and I would have them try to answer them as fully as they could. And you always start with the first question and then have them write out the answer to it and then the, go on to the second question. The first question is, what is the ideal day according to you? What would be your dream day? If you could have any day that would be your ideal day, what would it be? And then the second, and you have people write all that out and exactly what they would say that ideal day is. And then the second question that you ask them is, what is the single greatest day of your life? If you look back and you say, what was the greatest single day of your life? What was the day? It's so fascinating how differently people respond to those two questions. In the first question, I think we can all probably guess, right? It's lots of laughs. People are saying, oh, yeah, I'm sleeping late. My parents are over doing the laundry. Somebody's fanning me while somebody else is feeding me grapes. Lots of lay around, lots of comfort, lots of ego pandering. When you go to the second question, it's quite surprising. The single greatest day in the life of people isn't really anything like that, at least from my experiences. What you find is people saying stuff like, it was the time that we got it all together and we went to state. Or it was the time that I saved my brother from a canoe accident and he almost drowned. Or it's some story of trial and accomplishment and struggle. And when I think about those, those questions and the different ways that people answer them, I'm always left with a little bit of a sense of why do we have work set up as we do in the U.S.? There are so many jobs which just seem utterly meaningless. They're jobs that are designed to be foolproof, jobs that are designed to be uh, error-proof, and what we're really doing, I think, is robbing people from their, their right or their ability to have meaningful work. I mean, I think if you were to ask your average person What's your ideal job? I think, we again, we sort of laugh. People say funny stuff. They say, oh, yeah, I want a job that pays really well, that I don't have to do anything and has no responsibility. Um, and when I don't have to work if I don't want to. I just come in when I'd like. I think that sounds nice and that sounds really funny. I don't know how many people would really want that job. I wonder if it isn't the case that what we want is something like meaningful work. Meaningful work. I think many people want to do something meaningful with their life, whether that's working in a soup kitchen or whether that is working as a, uh, a doctor or a physician or a fireman or in some way contributing to the world, uh, in some way contributing to the benefit and welfare of others. And so I guess that would be one of the ways to get at this, is to say to what extent does meaningful work require the possibility of failure? the possibility of real effort. I think there is something like individual activity, individual action, uh, creativity, more responsibility. Um, I think if you'd say to your average person, uh, I'm going to help make your job more meaningful by giving you more responsibility, we'd go, oh, no, that's not fair. I don't want more responsibility. I want a fun job, an easy job, a well-paying job. I wonder if people really do know what's in their best interest or if people were given the option would most people choose lives that end up robbing them of meaning I wonder how many people are aware of how meaning comes into their lives and are strategically trying to harness it and how many people know what brings meaning to their lives and they still somehow can't get themselves to do and yet they're in a kind of despair they're in a kind of, I don't know, they're, they're at a loss for, I, I see it with students even sometimes, you know, that real meaningful work can be struggling through a class, to struggle through it, to, to work on the homework, to do the reading, and to show up adequately prepared, all of these things. It can be very meaningful because you're struggling so uh, arduously through it. There are other places, though, like imagine a class that, you know, you're doing the group hugs for the easy B. There's very little challenge. I think we all want to say that's just not very meaningful, right? There does seem to be something about resistance, difficulty, hardship that helps create the conditions for meaningfulness. And yet when I look at the culture, there's ever rising fronts of ease, comfort, convenience, 
pandering to ego. And as much as I think people seem to say they like it, I wonder if they're not really doing themselves a disservice. Uh, I don't think hardship, unnecessary hardship, is what I'm advocating. I'm more advocating a realistic, honest appraisal of ourselves, of my own life, of my own activities, and how much of what I take to be meaningful comes from feeling like one makes a contribution, feeling like one, what one does matters. Uh, I think the more that people could be honest with themselves about how differently we respond to that question of what is the ideal day according to you and what is the single greatest day in your life? Think about those questions and see to what extent could we live our lives as if every day was the single greatest day of our lives or is there something about us that we, we recognize that and yet we still sort of want to kid ourselves and say, yeah, it was beautiful to struggle and I'm so glad that I did all that hard work and I'm glad that I did all that, but I would really like to still just lay around and have someone, you know, feed me while someone else fans me and someone else can then, I don't know, uh, do the laundry, do the dishes and take care of the stuff for me. Um, okay, just some thoughts for the day and take care.